Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Pastor Michael Jackson. Welcome to the Bible Speaks Live. This live podcast is brought to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one. He's the only one who is able to answer your deepest questions, your deepest needs. It is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. We are streaming live right now on Facebook and also live on Spreaker.com. That is our podcast platform. Uh, you can listen in there live and you can go to Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. You will find several other podcasts there that we do produce. Uh, but we come to you on these Tuesday nights with a word from the Lord that he has put upon our hearts. And we bring it to you in hopes that it will touch you. It will strengthen you. It will give you hope and it will lead you closer to the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can go to our YouTube channel and you can subscribe there to uh our uh, page there and you can also go to our website at that's the word.org amen that's the word.org you will find all of these podcasts also right there awaiting you amen uh, shout out to all of those who do listen in live and who do download uh, our podcast on speaker.com from across the United States and around the world we see you we know you're there God bless you and thank you once again for your support amen we are going to, we have been actually uh, in a series of messages coming straight out of the book of Revelation. Uh, tonight we end our series in Revelation with the message to the church in Laodicea. The message to the church in Laodicea. And many say, many say that this is the, this is the most serious message. Many say that this is the gravest message. And this is the message uh, that uh, is above all of the other Church's messages, many say, uh, we shall see. Uh, but we do know that the war, that the Lord has a word for us uh, here as we go into uh, the word of God. If you know somebody who needs to hear the gospel, if you know someone who who you know that is not saved, not born again, who needs the Lord in their life, uh, why don't you just share this page? If you're watching on Facebook, share this page with someone and also alert them, tell them also that we are also streaming live on Spreaker.com. Amen. We know that the Lord has a word here tonight and he is seeking. The Lord is seeking and the Lord is waiting uh, for people to come in uh, to the kingdom. And the only way the people will come into the kingdom is through the gospel. Amen. So we're going to pray. and We're going to go right into the word of God for tonight. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you once again for allowing us to be in your presence. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord Jesus. Even when we are not faithful, Lord, you are faithful. So, Lord, we bless you and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you are doing, for all that you have done, and for all that you are going to do. Lord, we know that you are able. Lord, bless this time together, Lord. I pray that your power and your presence might be manifested even here tonight. Lord, I pray that as these words go out over the internet, Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray that they will touch whom they will, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, I pray that... Lord, they may be saved, they may, may be drawn to you, Lord, that your power may take them right where they are, Lord Jesus, and bring them to you. Lord, have your way. Bless us even right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The book of Revelation, chapter number three, the seventh and final letter that Jesus wrote. This message to the angel in the church of Laodicea. Once again, the church... These churches were churches that were in actual existence at the time of this, the writing, uh, but they contained messages not only uh, for the churches that existed down through the history of the church, but they also contained messages to us today. Messages to us today. True living words that are written for us. These words are timely. These words are practical, and we need to take heed to what the Lord is saying. As the Lord has said at the end of each letter, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We need to take heed to what the Lord has been saying and we need to pay special attention to what he is saying here in these words tonight. Revelation chapter number three, uh, starting in verse number 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods 
and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Amen. May the Lord once again bless the reading of his word. Amen. We want to bless the Lord tonight. Once again, if you know someone who is not born again, who is not saved, invite them to listen, share this page, let them know that a word for your heart and for your soul is coming through right now. I want to, I want you to pay special attention. I know we you've probably heard messages on this particular on this particular uh letter many times about uh being lukewarm and cold or hot and these these that's very important. It's important that the child of God not bring themselves to a place where they think they are one thing and they are another. It's important for us to recognize that when we don't recognize our true spiritual condition, we do our soul much harm. Jesus says, because you because you think you are rich, because you think you have need of nothing, basically you're saying, I am, I am. Because you think you are, Jesus says, you are lukewarm because you fail to see, Jesus says, you fail to see that you are miserable, you are wretched, you are poor, you are blind, and you are naked. They misunderstood their own spiritual condition. And we as the people of God must, we must make sure that we do not fall into this terrible trap of being fooled by our own condition, being having an inability to see our own condition in the Lord. We must make sure that we don't fall into that condition. He says here that there are certain things that the child of God needs to do. Listen, these are the people of God here. He says, I know your works. I know your works. He says, you're not cold. He says, you're not hot. You're not completely out the door, but you're not passionate and you're not on fire for me either. But because you're somewhere caught in the middle, you don't want to be stuck in the middle. You see, that's the problem. You don't want to be stuck in the middle as a child of God. It is better that you be cold. It is better that you be hot. Do not be lukewarm. Lukewarm is not a good place to be. And so he says, I, I counsel you to, to buy from me gold tried in the fire that you may be truly rich. You see, they failed to see their own spiritual condition. They were not they did not see that they were actually poor in spirit. So he says, buy from me the gold that you need, that you may truly be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. Okay, they needed the righteousness of God. Even though they were, Jesus says, I know your works, I know who you are. You're not cold, but you're not hot. They had righteousness, but it was their own righteousness that they had. They were puffed up. They were a little bit proud. They thought they were something that they were not. And Jesus says, Jesus says, no, you need white raiment. You need my righteousness that you may be clothed, really clothed, and that thou mayest, uh, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. You see, when you're covered with your own righteousness, you're actually naked. Because the Bible, your righteousness is nothing in his sight. The Bible says that our righteousness are as filthy rags in his sight. And so if you're clothed with your own own righteousness of who you think you are and what you think you have done. He, Jesus says you need to think again. You need to think again because he says uh, you need actually you need to come to me so that the shame of your nakedness uh, might not appear. And he says because you don't even see your own condition. He says in verse number uh, 18, he says, anoint thine eye with eye salve. Anoint. When you talk about anointing, Anytime you see the word anointing in the Bible, it's talking about the spirit of God. 
It's talking about the Holy Ghost. He says you need the spirit of God upon you so that you can see. Right now, you're not in a place where you can see what is going on. But I want to tonight, I, I want you to pay careful attention. Careful attention to verse uh, number 20. Not forgetting verse number 19, where he says, those I love, I chasten. The reason why Jesus speaks so hard to these individuals is because he loves them. The reason why Jesus says the things that he says is because he loves us. Here in verse number 20, I want you to see the depth, the depth of these Laodiceans, their nakedness, the depth of our nakedness that can happen when we don't see Christ properly and when we don't see ourselves properly. He says, behold, I stand at the door. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the fact that he's knocking. He is knocking. Yes, he is knocking. Notice the striking, the striking fact here that Jesus Christ is actually knocking at the door of the church. That Jesus Christ is on the outside of the church. He's not in. He's not in. Something has caused the Lord to be outside of the church. And here we see that Jesus is standing at the door. And he's knocking. He's knocking. And his plea is, if any man hear my voice. You see, we said he's outside of the church. But the church is actually made up of people. Each individual, each individual must themselves open up the door. We must go to the door. We must answer the door. We must do this if we are to see the Lord move in our midst. If we want to see the power of God, if we want to see the presence of God, we are going to have to do it his way. We have to come his way. And when he's knocking on the door, that means he's on the outside. There's also a message here for those who do not know the Lord. Those who do not know the Lord. Those who don't know the Lord, of course, the Lord is on the outside trying to get in. Trying to get in. You see here, Jesus is talking to the church actually. And he's telling, let me back in the church. Let me back in. By the things that you have done, by the things that you are doing, you, don't, you do not realize that you have pushed me out. I want to come back in. I belong there. And by his grace, by his grace, he's knocking to come in. He's knocking. He's not kicking. He's not behaving unseemly. He's knocking. And the Bible says, if you hear my voice, that means he's knocking and he's speaking. What is he speaking? Any number of things. He could be calling your name. We're going to talk about some of the things that he's saying because anytime that the Lord speaks, he speaks his word. He speaks the gospel anytime that he speaks. We're going to talk about several people in the Bible who heard that knock. They heard that knock and they responded to the knock. Have you heard the knock? Have you heard the Lord knocking at the door of your life, at the door of your heart, at the door of your spirit? Have you heard him knocking? If he's knocking, if you, has, if you have heard him knocking, that means he is trying to speak to you. The Lord is trying to tell you something. Have you heard him knocking? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He is knocking. But have you heard him? Have you heard him? If you go to the book of if you go to uh, the book of Acts, we're going to look at several people, several people within the book of Acts that heard a knocking. And we're going to see how they responded. The book of Acts, uh, chapter number uh, 10, the book of Acts, chapter 10, uh, tells us about a man named a man named Cornelius, a man named Cornelius. The Bible says here in verse number one of chapter 10 of Acts that he was uh, that he was a centurion of the band called the Italian band. He he was a soldier. He was an Italian man. He was a Roman, you could say. And, and, and he 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 was a good man. The Bible says, number one, he was devout. He was devout. It says here in verse number two, he was one that feared God. So he had a reverence for God. 
a uh, number of three, he said, with all his house, and he gave much alms. So you could say in our terms, he gave tithes. He gave money to the church. He gave money to the poor. It goes on to say that uh, he also prayed. He prayed to God. He didn't just pray, but it says that he prayed to God always. He was always praying. And in verse number 30, it says that he was fasting. Verse number 22 says that he was a man who had a good reputation. So this man who had all of these good things going for him in his life. And you may be in that place where you say, I do all these things. I pray. I go to church. I give my tithes. I even fast every now and again. I, I do all of these things. I have a reverence for God. I don't hate God. But still, there was something missing in Cornelius' life. In spite of those Good things, necessary things, excellent things that he was doing. He was without Christ. He was without Christ. He did not know the Lord in the forgiveness of his sins. He was operating in the light that he had, but the light that he had was not enough. You see, we cannot believe that just our attending church and just our being involved in church activities is enough. It is not enough. It is not enough that an individual goes to church every Sunday. It is not enough that an individual enjoys listening to gospel music uh, sometimes. It is, it is not enough that a person will come to church and, and sit and clap and listen and say amen and, and go home feeling good about themselves. It is not enough. You must know the Lord in the forgiveness of your sins. Repentance must take place place according to Rome according to Romans uh, chapter 10 uh, verses 9 and 10 and here's here's what it says Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed so you see these words tell us that there must be a personal confession of faith it is not just when we talk about belief we're talking about faith the bible says for you are saved by grace through faith that's the same belief that faith is and it's not an intellectual understanding of who jesus is it's not an intellectual understanding of, of God because that type of faith, the Bible says in James, in James chapter two, the Bible says that demons, you hear what I'm saying? The Bible says that demons believe and they tremble. They believe or oh, they know who Jesus is. The many times that Jesus expelled demons while he was here on earth in bodily form, the many times that he did, there was one set of demons that says, I know who you are. We know who you are. And Jesus didn't even let them speak. But they know who Jesus is. So knowing who Jesus is, being aware of what Jesus has done, knowing uh, full well what Jesus is able to do is not good enough. Is not good enough. There must be a confession of faith. There must be a confession of faith. You must come to the Lord through the convicting power of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God brings conviction to a life. And when conviction comes, there is a measure of guilt that happens. And you need a place to deposit that guilt, that pain, that shame. You need a place to deposit. And that place to deposit your sin is at the cross. It is at the cross. That's where it all happens. The song says, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. This is how it happens. But Cornelius, Cornelius knew nothing of this repentance. He knew nothing of this type of confession of faith. He knew nothing. And so the Lord directed him. The Lord gave him a vision. Yes, the Lord gave this man a vision and told him, told him where to go. Here's what he says in verse number six, Acts chapter 10, verse number six. He lodges with, he's talking about uh, 
Peter he was going to send him to. He lodges with one Simon Atana, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. You see, there was a knocking. For Cornelius, the knocking had begun. This was the knock. This was the knock. This was the voice. This was the Spirit of God trying to, attempting to get through to Cornelius. Cornelius could have said, hey, I'm fine the way I am. I pray. I give alms. I fast. He could have said all those things and went away empty. But what does he do? In obedience, he rises and he takes uh, himself and he takes a, a group of his people over to where Simon Peter is, who had just received a vision himself, basically telling him that he should not uh, have a level of prejudice against the Gentiles. And this Gentile shows up at his house and he tells him this. And here is what Peter begins to speak to, uh, uh, to Cornelius here at the house in verse 38, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. This is Peter speaking to uh, Cornelius and his family. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Peter is preaching. Peter is proclaiming the gospel to Cornelius. Cornelius has never heard the gospel like this. Cornelius has never heard these words before. He was operating in a different place. He was doing what he knew to do, but now he hear, now he is hearing the powerful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord was knocking. The Lord was knocking. And he goes on to say in verse number 39, and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Verse number 42, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. And here it comes. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. There it is. There it is. That's the final knock. The Bible says in verse number 44, while Peter yet spake, these words didn't even finish his preaching. Didn't even get the last, those last words out of his mouth. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. They heard the word. There was a knocking. They heard the word and they ran to meet Jesus. They ran to open up the They, they ran to open the door. They didn't walk to the door casually. No, 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 no. They didn't, they didn't take their time to unlock the door. They ran to the door and they opened it up. And the Bible says the spirit of God came down in that place. The Holy Ghost fell simultaneously and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They began speaking in tongues. Just like the Jews had earlier. And they were all filled. You see, they were ready to receive because they were ready. They were ready to receive because they had been ready to believe. See, that's what happens when you open up the door. Have you heard him knocking on the door of your life? The Lord is trying to tell you something. He's trying to tell you something. We move on to the book of Acts. In the book of Acts to uh, chapter number 16. Chapter number 16. And we see, we see in chapter 16 uh, that there was a special place that the Lord wanted Paul to be. They had tried to get into several places. The Bible says, the Bible says in Acts chapter number 16 and verse number six. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, forbidden. What happens when you're doing a work for the Lord and you think you're doing what the Lord wants you to do and all of, a, all of a sudden the Lord says, stop. I don't want you to do that. That's what he did. The Holy Ghost forbid them, said, no, do not go there. 
verse number seven, and 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 after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the spirit suffered them not. So two places. They tried to go. They tried to get into. And both times, the Spirit of God halted them and said, no, that's not where I want you to be right now. You see, sometimes the Lord will change the course of other people. Change your course. He will do things behind the scenes that you know not of, that you knew not of, just for you to hear the knock that you need to hear. You see, because there was some, there was some place that the Lord wanted Paul to be. It wasn't in Asia, and it wasn't in Bithynia. As good as those places were, that's not where the Lord wanted him to be at this time. It says, and passing by my sea, in verse number eight, they came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. It was clear. It was crystal clear. The Lord was saying, I want you to go to Macedonia and preach the gospel. And when they get there, here we are in verse number 14, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. So this woman who worshiped God, no, she was not a Christian, but she was doing, once again, similar to Cornelius. She was doing what she knew. She was a good woman, and she was operating in the light that she had, and she was worshiping God. But the Lord sent them specifically to her, specifically do you know that the Lord will send somebody just to you to speak to you personally? And you might write it off. You might say it's a coincidence. You might say it's this. You might say it's that. The Lord will dispatch someone specifically to you to knock at your door. And what will you do when you hear the knock? The Lord opened up her heart that she attended unto the... <coughs> unto the things which were spoken of Paul. That was her knock. That was her knock. She could have responded. She could have said, listen, I worship God. I'm here. I'm here with this group of people by the riverside. We're here. Uh, it says in verse number 13 that prayer was also always was made there. So we are praying. We're worshiping God. We're doing what we know how to do. We're fine the way we are. She could have done that. But the Bible says that the Lord opened up her. So when you get into the presence of God, when you hear that knock, when the Lord begins to knock on the door of your life, you got to open the door. You got to open the door. And when you open the door, he says in Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 20, if you hear his voice, open the door. He says, I will come in and sup with him and you will sup with him. There's going to be fellowship, divine fellowship. He will come. And he will be with you and he will speak with you and he will talk with you and he will be with you. But you have to open up the door of your heart, of your life, and let him in. He's knocking. He is knocking. Oh, yes, he's knocking. But you see, those were two examples of individuals who did the right thing. They did the right thing. But if you move on in the book of uh, Acts and you go down to Acts chapter number 24, Acts chapter 24 and verse number 24, Acts chapter 24 and verse number 24, there was a man by the name of Felix who had a wife named uh, Drusilla. And they both came to see uh, Paul who was in prison. And in verse number 24, it says, after certain days when Felix came with Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess. He sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. He gave him an audience. Felix says, I'm going to sit and I'm going to listen to what this man has to say. 
about this Jesus Christ. I'm, I want to hear. Whether he just did it as sport, whether he just did it funning, or whether he was serious, we shall soon see. But it says here, verse number 25, and as he reasoned, Paul, Paul didn't waste any time. Paul saw an opportunity to preach the gospel, to proclaim the word, and he took it. He took it as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, that is self-control, and judgment to come, three facets of the gospel. It says Felix trembled. Now, why do you think Felix trembled? Because the Lord was knocking at the door of his heart. The Lord wanted to get into Felix's life. He felt it. He sensed the presence and the power of the convicting of the Holy Ghost. And he trembled, literally trembled. The Bible says he answered. This is what he said. This is his response to the knock that he heard. He says, go thy way. Go thy way. Leave. Go. For this time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. You see, he put him off. He put him off. How many times have we heard? How many times have we heard the Lord call us? How many times have we heard the Spirit of God speaking to us, telling us to come, telling us to make it right, telling us what we need to do, and yet and still we do not because somehow, like the Laodiceans in the book of Revelation, we think that we are okay. We think we're all right. I'm rich. I have need of nothing. I'm okay. Not realizing that you're wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. That was the condition of Felix and Drusilla. But even as he trembled, he said, no, 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 no. I, 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 I'll give up too much. I can't give it up. The rich man, the young rich ruler, had the same problem. Jesus said, give up these things. He said, sell what you have. The knock. That was the knock. Sell what you have. Get rid of yours. Get rid of the things that you have. Sacrifice. And then you can come to me. The Bible says he went away sad because he had many possessions. He was not able to give what he had up. And he went away sorrowful. What do you do when the Lord knocks? He's waiting. He's waiting. He's giving you time to come on in. By his grace, he continues to knock. He continues to knock. He said he was going to wait for a convenient season, Felix said. Sometimes the convenient season never comes. In other words, the convenient season means at a time when I'm ready. See, we want to do things when, when we are ready, when we feel we are ready. When the Lord is knocking at the heart of the door of your heart, that's the Lord telling you, I'm ready for you right now. I want you now. And you can come right then. But we decide that we are going to set the rules and set the parameters. No, Lord, I'm not coming to you now. I will come in my good time. No, sometimes the convenient season does not come. We must take pains when he's knocking to come, to come. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace to help in the time of need. Oh yes, he's knocking. He's knocking. I'm wondering if you can hear him. Finally, we go down just a few more chapters. Chapter number 26. Chapter number 26, and we see King Agrippa. King Agrippa. The Lord was, the Lord was putting individuals uh, in the presence of Paul. And Paul was going to take every opportunity. The Bible says, in season and out of season, you must be ready to preach this word. And he was ready. He here he is now in front of King Agrippa, and he is going to let loose, so to speak. He is going to preach his heart out. Remember, he's in prison.
But the king comes. The Bible says that the king came with, with all of his pomp and circumstance. He came with all of his regal robes. He came decked out to hear this man out of curiosity. It says in verse number 23, Paul speaking, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. The knocking has begun. The knocking has begun in the life, in the heart, in the soul of King Agrippa. Here's what Agrippa tells him. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus, Festus, who was also there, who was also a government official who was there, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, <laughs> he says, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. He said, Paul, you crazy. <laughs> Paul, you are crazy. What is wrong with you? You got too much smarts up here. You've gone mad. You've lost your marbles. You're saying crazy stuff. You're not making sense. Paul says, huh, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. He says, there's nothing wrong with my mind. I'm not crazy. I'm not loony. I'm not drunk. Look, I'm speaking the truth. I'm speaking the truth for, for the king. He says in verse number 26, for the king knows of these things. Agrippa, go ask Agrippa. He knows about these things. Before whom also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. He's talking about the life of Jesus. He's talking about the miracles of Jesus. He's talking about the raising of people from the dead. He's talking about his crucifixion. He's talking about his passion. He's talking about his death and resurrection. He says, none of these things were done in a corner. It's no secret. Everybody knows about these things. So you calling me mad. Everybody knows these things happened. Verse number 27. Here's the knock. Here is the knock. He says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. I know that thou believest. Do you believe? A pointed question. It wasn't a trick question. It wasn't a, a question that could not be answered. He said, simple question. Do you believe the prophets? Do you believe what they have said concerning this man, Jesus, whom I have explained to you? Then Agrippa in verse number 28, here is Agrippa's answer. To the knock on his heart. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. There's been many had said that this what he actually meant when he said he wasn't meaning it in that way that he's that it that it's written here. By what we see written here, he says, Listen, Paul, you got me over a stump. Are you trying to convince me? Of, you got me. You all, I'm, I'm, I'm there, but I'm not there. So close, yet so far. You can be right there. How is it that you can be right in the presence, right in the presence of God, right in the presence of the power of God, right in the presence of the moving of the Spirit of God, and yet have the Spirit of God miss you? Because you don't hear the knock. Song says, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I don't want the Lord to pass me by. I want to see the Lord. I want to know the Lord. I want, I want him to send me. I want him to do with me whatever he wants to do. When I hear the Lord knocking at my heart's door, I want to respond. I want to respond favorably. Favorably. Have you heard him knocking at the door of your life? If so, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Once again, being in God's house is not enough. It's not enough to say I go to, I go to church. Okay, good. But see, there's supposed to be a power and a presence 
that enters into your life. It's not about political change. It's not about social change. That's not what the gospel is all about. Churches nowadays are preaching politically and socially and trying to tell people that we need, that there's so much injustice that we need to rise up and stand against. The Bible knows nothing about that. No, no. People try to twist the words of Jesus into trying to make Jesus say things like that. Jesus came and he was concerned about the heart. That's what Jesus is concerned about, the heart. Not politics, not social advancement or social justice or injustice. These things will take care of themselves. These things, he has everything under control. Not to say that there's not a place for these things. No, I'm not saying that at all. Of course, there's a place for there's a place for social justice. There's a place for uh, there's a place for uh, political change. There's a place for all those things. But we're talking about Jesus Christ. He's he's worried about not worried. He is more concerned with spiritual change. Spiritual change. He wants to come into our heart. He wants to change the life. See, Jesus knows that the world is wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Jesus knows that the world thinks that everything is fine, at least on a certain level. On a certain level, they the world thinks everything is fine. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll go to therapy. I'll go see a psychologist. I'll go see a psychologist, a psychologist. I'll do what I have to do. I'll do the best I can. I'll try to treat my neighbor right. I'll do all these things. And, I, and when it's when it's all said and done, my good will outweigh my bad, will, out, will outweigh weigh my bad, and I'll go to heaven or some such place. I'll be good. No, you won't. No, you won't. All the money that Oprah gives. All the money that rich people and philanthropists give to, to do good works, to build schools, all of these are necessary things. And they are done. And they are good. But they are not salvation. No one will be able to say, I gave all of my money to the poor. I did this for this and I gave money for this. And that will should that should ensure my place with God in heaven. No, it won't. No, it won't. It's what the Bible says. Even if I give my body to be burned and have not love, I have become a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. It doesn't matter what you do. It matters what you believe. What you believe. And if, if you believe that you're rich, that you have it together, that everything is all right, and that Christianity is good for those people, but I have my way over here. If that's what you believe, then you're believing erroneously. Am I saying that Jesus Christ is a narrow way? Yes. Am I saying that Jesus Christ is for everyone? Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. Paul said he was the chief. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. This is spiritual death. This is eternal separation from God. There is no middle ground. As, as Catholics will tell you, there is, no, there is no middle ground. There is no purgatory. No one can pray your loved ones out of purgatory into heaven. No. The business that you have to do with God, you have to do it here and now. There's no time to wait. Time is short. It's later than you think. Later than you think. And the Lord is knocking. 
He is knocking at the door of your heart, of your life. And he's saying, I want to come in. You've heard him knocking before. You've heard him knocking on the door of your life before. You don't know what to do with it. You don't know how to respond. You don't know how to handle it. You say, Lord, I come to you. Lord, I sense your presence. I can sense you speaking to me. Lord, I open up that door. Lord, I let you come in. Lord, accept me the way I am. Save me. Cleanse me. Forgive me of my sins. Make me into a new creature. Lord, I believe that you came, that you lived, and you died for me on the cross. And that according to your word, when I confess and I believe, I am saved. It's by faith. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your faith, for my, for the faith that you have given me to trust you. Oh, yes. He's knocking. He is knocking. What will you do? Open up the door of your life. Let Jesus in. He who believes in me, he who believes in me shall not be confounded. That means confused. He will give light. He will give peace. He will give joy. We need to come to Jesus. Agrippa. Agrippa said almost. Felix said, I'll check in with you later. Don't wait. Don't wait. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name. We, we set your presence. We thank you for your power. Lord, we know that there are many who are listening even right now. That one who is listening Wherever they are, Lord Jesus, Lord, you have guided them. You have sent them right to this point right now, to this place, to hear this word. Lord, you're knocking at the door of their life. Lord, I pray that you will speak to their hearts as they open up their life to you. If you're listening right now, if you're watching right now, and you sense the Lord knocking at your life's door. I want you to simply say these words. Words don't save. Faith saves. But I want you to repeat these words. And mean them from the bottom of your heart. Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for rising from the dead for me. According to your word, in Romans 10, chapter 9, and verses 9 and 10, when I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead, I will be saved. Lord, I thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. See, it, it, that's all there is to it. Once again, words don't save. Words don't save. But by faith, by faith, you can claim salvation. By faith. You trust that you have prayed that prayer. The Lord has come into your heart. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Brand new. Your new creation in Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We thank him. We thank him for the opportunity 
that he has given us to speak uh, his word uh, tonight. Uh, we pray once again that you will share, share these words, share these, these words with someone. Let someone else know that there's a word, that there's a powerful word of salvation uh, here uh, that you want them to hear. We know that the Lord will have his way uh, in their hearts. Amen. We believe that the Lord, uh, we believe that the Lord uh, will anoint uh, even as they listen, even as they hear, as they watch. We know that the Lord is able to do this. Amen. We pray that the Lord will continue to have his way and bless his people with peace. Uh, we come to you on these nights uh, with the word of God, believing and knowing that this is the word that he has given us. And we pray that it will be beneficial to your to your Christian life. Uh, we we are That's the Word Ministries, and you'll find us online uh, at That's the Word.org. You can also find our YouTube channel. Just type in uh, Pastor Michael Jakes. That'll take, uh, that'll take you straight to uh, our, our YouTube channel, uh, That's the Word Ministries, and uh, you will find everything that we upload there. You'll find this particular podcast and many other podcasts that we have there. If you go to Spreaker.com, which is our podcast platform, you will also find uh, all of our podcasts that we do produce uh, and make available to those who will listen. Uh, as we said, we want to shout out to those uh, across the United States and around the world uh, who do listen uh, to this podcast and all of our other podcasts. We thank you for your support. Amen. You can also support us by going to uh, our web, uh, to our uh, YouTube channel and subscribing there to our channel. That would be bene beneficial and very uplifting uh, to us. Amen. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes, and thank you for listening tonight. Don't forget tomorrow night, we'll be right back here uh, with the Wednesday night Cutting It Right Bible study, a riveting Bible study that will be for your soul. Amen. So once again, have a good night. May the Lord continue to bless you. Amen and amen.